Hey, hey, hey. All right, so I'm not a draft guy. I've never been a draft guy. I'm never going to claim to be a draft guy. Uh, but for all those reasons, uh, you know, Shaden Sharp was already a very you know, mystery box type prospect around this time last year, heading into his draft cycle. You know, to me, since I'm not a draft guy, I really had absolutely no idea what this guy was going to be. I did see a few mixtapes from his high school time on Twitter. And um, I, at the same time, though, I was very intrigued as to what he would end up being in his rookie season. And despite not playing a single second in college at Kentucky, and the last time he played competitive basketball was back in high school, Portland Trailblazers still decided to take him 7th overall in last year's draft, a pick that I thought was very bold, although again, I have you know, limited knowledge on the subject. Mostly just because, you know, as a franchise, if you say you're trying to win now with a superstar like Damian Lillard, I just question why you would take such a, you know, long-term build-a-bear prospect like Shaden Sharp. Just didn't really make much sense to me at the time, but anyway, I digress. I'll also admit that I was never the most frequent watcher of the Portland Trailblazers this past season, although it did feel like every time I checked in and, you know, watched their games every now and then, uh, Shane Sharp continued to impress me as a player, as a rookie, as a 19-year-old rookie. And that improving seemed to continue until we hit this one stretch late in the season. The last 10 games that the Trailblazers played, uh, Shane Sharp ended up starting and getting heavy minutes in all those games, and he put up quite the stat line at that last month or so of the season. During that stretch, he averaged over 23 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, also had over 3 turnovers a game, but we'll get to that. And he did all this while shooting 46, 38, and 77 on his splits from the field, and uh, all that in just a little under 36 minutes a game, which is, you know all-star level work for a, a lot of players in this league and the obvious point to make here is that a 19 year old rookie doing this is absolutely absurd even if it was just only for 10 games that is a at least in my opinion a large enough sample size from a rookie to be able to project really good things for the rest of his career i mean this alone should be reason enough to answer uh, you know, the, the video title here, why Shaden Sharp is untouchable for the Trailblazers this offseason, but we're not going to stop here. We're going to need to dig deep and look at some of the specific things that I liked and some things I didn't like about Shaden Sharp from his rookie season. Let's dig in. For starters, Shaden Sharp just has serious bounce. Uh, I assume that's what most people know about him at this point in his career. Uh, I do remember he was supposed to be in the dunk contest this past season, but he backed out for unknown reasons at the last second, which in hindsight was a pretty ballsy move, considering Sharp probably could have gotten a lot of recognition and you know grew popularity from the dunk contest because that's what all it really does these days. But anyway, I respect the decision. He focused on his game and it paid off. And uh, I mean, I'll just leave it at this. He's one of the guys, the very few guys on a short list in this league who they get the ball in transition, or their team has the ball in transition, he's filling the lane, and you just have no choice but to stare at that TV screen or whatever you're watching on until the play is done, because you might miss something crazy happening, because that that's just, that's the only way to describe Shane Sharp in transition. He's just absurd. He's also actually just good at finishing around the rim. Uh, I mean, he'll go through you, he'll go around you, he'll go over you. He's just, he's already got a lot of that stuff down. And according to Basketball Reference, he shot over 70% when within three feet of the hoop, which is, uh, you know, pretty pretty solid numbers for big men who do most of their shooting around the hoop. And even more impressive for someone like Sharp, who is a guard and, you know, can play some wing, but mostly a guard. And another fun trait that he has is uh, he, he's just got he's got a little dash of that John Morant to him, where sometimes he'll, without thinking, just launch himself into the defense, going towards the rim without actually thinking about what he's gonna do with the basketball. But at the same time, he's also not as reckless as Jaw when doing this, so it's just a bit more visually appealing. Also, similarly to Jaw, he's not just a power guy. Shaden Sharp can go through you or over you, but he's also really good at going around you and having these finesse finishes where, you know, he's switching hands and just fun stuff like that. 
I was also pretty shocked with how smooth this floater game looked. I just wasn't really expecting it from someone with his athleticism. Usually those types of guys just rely on, you know, their athleticism to get them to the rim and they don't really have to worry about finishing that well and have good touch. But Shane Sharp, he, he's got a pretty decent floater. The only real nitpick I have for him off the dribble is that, uh, for one, he, he just he's turning the ball over a lot right now. And uh, I know that's just a common thing for rookies who see their usage spike at t certain times in their rookie year. Turnovers are just going to happen. That's part of the game. But a lot of the Shane Sharp turnovers were just loose handles, you know, getting pickpocketed. Similar stuff to what I saw from like Jalen Brown in these most recent playoffs. Just a lot of stuff like that, which if it persists could be an issue, but hopefully it won't be an issue at the end of the day. He also wasn't super strong from the mid-range off the dribble, but again, that, that's just that's just some really nitpicky stuff for a rookie to go at. And then the one last thing I want to add about the driving is I really liked how Shane Sharp is not afraid of contact at all. In fact, during that last 10-game stretch of the season, he got to the free throw line a good amount, and this will continue to be a very easy way for him to manufacture points, especially when you consider the fact that he's just such a freak athletically that he's very hard to keep in front of if you're a defender so that means he can get by defenders easily you know he can take some tips from james harden and the fact that you know once you have a defender beat you can easily get him to foul you or bait him into fouling you stuff like that which i know we all hate but it could be a very lucrative business for shane sharp if he continues on that path now let's move beyond New York real quick and talk about his three-point shooting. It wasn't just another, I think people took it for granted how good of a three-point shooter Shading Sharp was this past season. Because again, he, he didn't play college basketball. So he went straight from a three-point line in high school, which is, you know, touching the free throw arc, whatever you call that thing on the, you know, free throw extended i don't i don't know what the exact term of it is but then you go from that to the nba which is a, a lot deeper out especially uh from the wings and the top of the key and it's just a very large jump to take when you don't have that medium college line to deal with for a year or so anyway sharp ended up shooting 36 percent from three on three and a half attempts per game for the whole season but again if we look at just those last 10 games those numbers shot up to 38% on a much higher volume of 8.5 attempts per game, which is just insane for someone who not only is a 19-year-old rookie, but again, went from shooting high school three-pointers to NBA three-pointers, which, you know, a high school three-pointer is like barely even classified as a deep midi in the NBA. And let me also just mention, he even had a few plays where he just did not even care that the defender was in his face. And he just hit some tough step back threes, which, I, I mean, he looked like a 10-year vet out there. And the fact that he's doing this already is just has me insanely excited to see what he's able to do down the line in his future. His playmaking was solid. You know, he moves the ball. He's not necessarily a ball hog. Um, I, I, it's kind of different. One game I watched, he was playing with Damian Lillard and the other two games were without Damian Lillard. So it was interesting to see his dynamic of being you know, going from oh i'm the guy i'm the go-to number one option on this team right now versus when he's playing with damian lillard and he has to fall back into more of a you know catch and drive guy who's not always initiating the offense or being the first option anyway when it comes to actual you know passing of the ball he did show a few good flashes in the couple games i watched uh these two plays off the pick and roll were really good pocket passes made by him which Again, gives me hope for the future that he'll be able to routinely do this at some point. Uh, but for the most part, at this point in his career, it's a lot of just, you know, grabbing the ball, getting it out in transition, because that's easily where Shaden Sharp is at his strongest, is when he's out running and he can use his athleticism to just, you know, go around through or over defenders. And it's the playmaking in those scenarios, which will be interesting to see. You know, it's just going to be on Shaden Sharp to keep on making plays like these, where even just simple stuff like, grabbing the rebound, pushing it up the floor, and just finding open shooters. That's just really promising stuff to see at this point. And then there's the defense. Now, I, I don't want to get too nitpicky on this aspect because, again, I was watching games from the end of the season. The Blazers had already waved their white flag and you know, were in 
tank mode. I know you're not supposed to call it tanking, but they were they were tanking. So I could understand why someone would not be playing the hardest on defense in these games. And it, it showed. I'll, I'll definitely say that it showed for Shaden Sharp that he was not mentally locked in on defense. <laughs> and I don't want to go as far to say that he's a bad defender. He's definitely a perfectly fine defender. He has the athleticism to get into passing lanes and create steals. And he even had a few plays where he was picking pockets. But at the same time, he, he gets beat back door. He gets, he's just lost on defense sometimes. He doesn't quite understand how offenses work yet. Another thing that's very typical for players like Shaden Sharp, these project guys who are just going to need some time and some playing time to understand the game more. So on the defensive front, again, I'm not really too worried about this stuff. I will gladly tune in once they're playing some more competitive basketball out there in Portland. And, um, yeah, because he's, he's shown enough flashes. I think he could be a perfectly fine defender in this league. I know making comparisons to other NBA players is a very stupid thing to do, but a few guys that came across my mind while watching him were Paul George, Jalen Brown, just, you know, those shifty guard wings who can go get you some buckets, but maybe have some, you know, more... <laughs> more polarizing defensive tendencies. Regardless, Shane Sharp looks like he's going to be a very special player in this league. I know I have officially jumped onto the Shane Sharp Island, the Shane Sharp bandwagon, whatever you want to call it. There's even a part of me that really hopes Portland trades day in this offseason, just so that we can see Shane Sharp in a bigger role in year two and really see these numbers start to boost. <laughs> Either way, that's that. I hope I've convinced some of y'all to join me out here on the Shaden Sharp train because we are ready to take off. And outside of that, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. You can follow me on Twitter at Kokinos Noah. I'll have it across the bottom right there. And as always, I hope y'all have a good one.